Good morning, students. My name is Simo Dothia, your popular civic education teacher. Before we begin the lesson of today, I wish to acknowledge those who have taken their time to do the assignments that was given. Of course, the class of today is for just one, just two, and just three students. So, there are those who are consistent in doing the assignments. I have here exalts Akwabuge, then I have Samuel Ekon, I have Grace Olka, then I have Lionel Benjamin, then Ifia Sovano Smua, Clement Isong, then Clinton Benjamin. I thank you very much for being consistent in doing and submitting your assignments on the next. Before I begin the topic of today, I would like to talk about what we have done earlier on. We did talk about national consciousness and many of the objects that portrays national consciousness. We talked about the national ID card. We talked about the coat of arms. We talked about the Nigerian passport, which can also be called international passport. We said the Nigerian coat of arm is a symbol that portrays the goals of the country. And uh, on the coat of arms, we have the eagle, which stands for strength. We have the horse, which stands for dignity. We have the black shield, which stands for the fertile soil of Nigeria. Then we have the flower on the base of the shield, which stands for Costal Spectabilis, a popular flower that can be found everywhere in the country. And uh, that signifies beauty. Then the white segments of the shield represents the two important rivers in Nigeria, which are River Niger and Benue. River Niger and Benue. Uh, the two rivers meet at the times called the confluence. And I explained that the points where two rivers meet is called the confluence. So the confluence of River Niger and Benue is in Lokoja. All these are possible questions that may come to you in examinations, both internal and external. So you please take note of those uh, points I have raised. Then we also discussed about the national flag as a national symbol, and I said the green represents agriculture, the white represents peace, peaceful peace and unity of the country, peaceful coexistence of members of the country. So you need to understand all of these as symbols of national con consciousness. If you have national consciousness, you everything you do will be for the country. You render selfless service to the country, Nigeria. You won't always rely on or on those activities that will only bring favor to you, that will bring profit to you. You render selfless service. The kind of services that you may not be paid for, you always seek to do as a nationalist as a nationalist. So that ushers us to the next topic, which is obligations of citizens and promotion of national unity. Obligations of citizens 
and promotion of national unity. When you look at the word obligation, it looks as if it could also portray duties. But we have differences between rights, or oh sorry, duties and obligations. Duties are the things you have to do. Probably you will be forced to do your duty. But obligations are just promises. Though in most cases, obligations may go beyond mere promises. We shall get to know more about that very soon. The areas we need to cover in the course of this lesson are meaning of obligation, obligations of citizens, consequences of failure to perform obligations by citizens, and government institutions for the promotion of national unity. Let's talk about the meaning of obligation. Obligation is something that someone is required to do. It also refers to actions that must be fulfilled or performed by an individual as imposed by law, rules, and regulations or by agreements. Meaning that obligations, the law can define the various obligations that you need to perform, then it might also be by agreements, agreements of the minds between individuals and the government. So, for you to be able to perform your obligation, you need to understand the meaning of obligation. then obligation of citizens. Citizens have various obligations that they have to undertake. So obligation of citizens can be described as the promises made by citizens to be allied to their responsibilities and to discharge their duties without being intimidated without being forced to perform those obligations. When you have a promise, like when you pledge to Nigeria, there are promises embedded in that. Promises to be faithful, loyal, and honest. Those are the obligations because the recitation of that pledge is a binding agreement on you to perform those objectives are stated on the pledge. You have to be up and working and also be alive to those responsibilities. You must be faithful, you must be loyal to the constituted authorities, you must do everything to enhance the unity of the country because it is a promise you have made by reciting the pledge. Then we have various classifications of obligations of citizens. We have economic, strict financial obligations. We have civic and political obligations. We have social obligations. And uh, this is so because the classification only outlined about three, simply because of, of your level of learning. When you go beyond this class to a higher class, you may get to understand that obligations is far beyond what you comprehend in this lower class. For example, you may get to understand that there are legal obligations and there are moral obligations that you have to perform in the society. But for now, we have to dwell on 
those ones we have outlined on the board because of your level of understanding. You know, I have said that this class is specifically for just one, just two, and just three. When you go further, you will get to understand more about other classifications of obligations. Let's talk about economic or financial obligations. When the word economics is mentioned, what comes to your mind probably may be different. But in this case, we are talking about being able to engage in economic activities to bring income to you and to be able to use that income and do something tangible in the country. So that's the, the idea we have when it comes to economy. And it's related. Economy and financial are interrelated. So this is why we have voluntary promise made by citizens to pay money and other levies, such as payments of taxes and levies. When you pay your tax, as an adult, because why I said when you go beyond this level, you get to understand that there are legal obligations and there are moral obligations. Legal obligations in the sense that if you fail to perform those ones, it could be challenged in law courts. So being a minor, you can only pay certain taxes, not all the taxes. But the tax you've been paying are not visible. You cannot see them. You don't know about them. But you unconsciously pay those taxes. In the cost of buying certain items, you pay indirect tax. Because the seller of those items imputed some elements of tax that was levied on him for you to pay indirectly without knowing about it. So this is why I'm trying to tell you that as a minor, you are still paying tax without knowing about it. You are still paying tax. When you buy pencil, part of the cost of that pencil is a tax that has been imputed. The seller has been levied from the point of manufacturing a tax has been paid, and that tax is further forwarded to whoever that buys the wholesalers, that buys the product to come and sell, and subsequently the tax land on the buyers. Whoever that consumes the product will bear the final burden of the tax. So you are paying tax indirectly. So the tax or taxes and levies and what the government will use in providing social services. Example of a social service is road construction. A road that you walk on is a public good. It's classified as public good. Because why it is public is simply because everybody makes use of the road without paying directly for the services rendered by the government that provides the road. So taxes are used for the provision of social services, as the case may be. Then ladies, you can violate a certain law. And for example, as a minor, if you attempt to drive a car and you are caught by the police, your parents be charged for allowing you to drive a car when you are not an adult. And your parents will pay certain fines and levies to the government. Your parents will pay fines and levies to the government, which form part of the economic and social and economic and financial obligations. 
Then the next one is tenants for the use of public utilities. When you make use of public water supply, you have to pay for the, the bills. You have to pay the bills for the supply of the water by the government. You also have to pay electricity bills because those are public utilities. Those are public utilities. Electricity, water, and many other things that you use that are being provided for by the government. So, payments for the use of public utilities such as electricity bill is an economic or financial obligation. Then, we also have payments for sanitation levies. Governments provide areas where refuse can be disposed and they take care of that place so that it may not cause public nuisance. It may not generate to uh, public nuisance. It may not cause problem to members of the public by probably causing some kind of sickness. So governments make sure that the refuse collected are well treated and disposed of. And for that, you have to pay sanitation levy. And you also you have the obligation to also participate in sanitation exercise at all times or at regular interval. So the payment of sanitation levies is an economic and financial obligations of citizens. Then payments for the use of public event centers. Marriages are organized and other events, burial. If you check or select the primary school in your village as a place to organize burial, you have to pay for it. If you select the same primary school as a place to organize marriage, you have to pay for that location. And there are other other government, there are other government event centers, like civic centers can be used as event centers in the local government headquarters. And individuals that hire the place must pay for them. So that is the promise you have actually made to contribute economically and financially to the developments of your country. Then another category of obligation is civic and political obligations. Civic and political obligations. This means the moral promise made by citizens to participate in democratic process and respect the rights of other citizens in the following areas. The number one area is to register to vote during election. To register to vote during election. Of course, this to portray that promise you made when you recited the national pledge that you have to be faithful to your country. It is a show of faithfulness. It is an exercise of faithfulness to one's country to go and register and vote only if you are an adult, eligible adult. If you are eligible to vote, if you are eligible to vote as an adult when you are up to 18 years and above, then you are free to go and vote. But if you are a minor, you don't have to go and vote. The only thing you have to do as you study civic education in school, you advise those close to you, the adults that are close to you, your parents, your sisters and brothers that are up to the age of exercising their franchise, 
to go and exercise their franchise. You remind them of their civic obligations. You remind them. You tell them, please go out and vote during election so that you'll be able to elect a good leader. Because when you lack interest in political affairs of the country, you are exercising political apathy, which we'll talk about it very soon. So the next one is discouraging all forms of election malpractices. If you grow to become an adult and you go to vote because in election it's one man, one vote. If you go and decide to vote two times, it means that you are trying to do a form, a certain form of malpractice, election malpractice. So for you to be able to exercise the right and allow other people to exercise the right to, you must discourage electoral malpractices, all forms of toggery, all forms of uh, ballot box stuffing, all forms of carrying of ballot boxes by pet tops. You need to go, vote, and leave, and also advise your friends not to be paid to go and carry election materials because that will be a disservice to your nation. Then, respecting the rights of others to vote and be voted for. If you engage in election malpractice, you are trying to deprive others of the exercise of their rights to vote and be voted for, which is called franchise. The right to vote and be voted for is called franchise. So you don't need to deprive others of their rights. You have to also respect the rights of others to go out and vote freely for the candidates of their choice. You don't stop anybody. You don't encourage tongue You don't encourage electoral malpractice. You don't ever encourage. You advise people who you found to be wanting in that direction to desist from those activities. Then also, supporting all constituted authorities is also civic and political obligations. All constituted authorities, authorities that are placed to manage the affairs of the nation, those authorities like I, I talked about constituted authority when I discussed civic education, a topic with the senior classes, and um, I mentioned some of the considered authorities. I said we have some categories of considered authorities. We have legal rational authority. I told them we have traditional authorities, and I told them we also have charismatic authorities, which you ought to know too. And I told them that classification was made by a sociologist, Max Weber. Max Weber made that classification. But I did not mention authority that uses force, which is military authority. I did not mention to them. But you got to know that too, that military authority uses force. So supporting consistent authority, be it traditional authority, be it authority that gets the power from the constitution, which is called legal rational authority, or be it authority that derives the power from special display of special characteristics. Like I told them yesterday that if, your, if a friend of yours displays certain characteristics of learning, that's being serious in learning and always answering questions in the class. The person could be said to have charismatic qualities. The qualities that is responsive at all times to good things. And you can always go to them, to such a person, to ask questions. Please explain this to my understanding. 
and the person will do that for you. So, you must respect considered authorities like I have mentioned, the traditional authorities that derive their powers from the tradition and customs of the people, the legal rational authorities that derive their powers from constitution from the laws of the land. Like in Nigeria, we have a written constitution. And considered authorities like the executive, the judiciary, and uh, the legislatures, the legislature, use the law to guide their conduct in the society as an authority, as considered authority. They always refer to the constitution to look at what should be done and what not to be done. Then, then we also talk about, we also need to understand that maintaining orderliness in the society is a form of civic and political obligation. You have to be orderly. You have to behave orderly. You want to, you, or, or you are in the dining hall, you came up to get food. You don't have to jump the queue. You don't have to go and struggle. So you have to follow due process to go and get your meal, your food for the day. That is orderliness. That is a show or a display of orderliness in the society. Then, remember, I said we have three classes of obligations. I've mentioned the other two. Remaining social obligation. Social obligation. Everybody lives in the society. The school that it belongs to is a society of its own. The village you belong to is a society. The church you belong to is a society which we belong. So, the promise to live peacefully in, and in harmony with the members of our community, irrespective of religion, gender, ethnic differences, and many more other things, is an aspect of social obligation. It is an aspect of social obligation. So when you promise to live peacefully, like the church will always address your moral needs. The church will address the moral needs. And the church cannot ask you to go and live with your neighbor in trouble or in war. They will always advise you to live peacefully with your neighbor. If, any of, if your friend belongs to a different religion, you have to tolerate. One of the aspects that could actually bring about social obligation is being tolerant. Being tolerant of any, every other per person. You have to tolerate your friends. You have to bear them. You have to respect their views. You have to respect their religion. You have to respect their ethnic groups, wherever they belong to. You have to respect. You have to accept their differences. No two human beings can ever be the same. You should know that. So no two persons or three persons are compatible. At least there must be some aspect of differences that you have to tolerate from one another. Then we are going to see the aspect of social obligations which every individual must try to observe. So means of fulfilling social obligations. There are the channels through which when you do those things or when you perform those actions, then you are set to be observing social obligations you are said to be fulfilling social obligations. Those things that you can do for you to be applauded as undertaking social obligations. 
The number one is having the ability to tolerate other people. Bearing other people's differences, being just and honest to other people, being able to understand other people's differences, and not segregating against anybody. That is tolerance. You belong to two types of religion. If you are Muslim or Christian, you try to tolerate the differences. You try to accept the other person's religion and also the other person should accept your own religion as being a part and parcel of you. Then promise not to discriminate against anybody based on religion, ethnicity, or gender. These days, in the family, some people tend to love the boy child more than the girl child. It's wrong. It's wrong. A girl child is as important as the boy child in the family. So, you should not try to segregate, try to sideline other people in terms of sex or gender or in terms of ethnicity or in terms of religion. You should not try that at any time. If you can keep to this promise, it means you are able to perform social obligations. Then being patriotic and faithful to the nation. Of course, like I said, when you say the pledge, it's a promise. That is actually a promise. When you sing the national anthem, the facts, the goals contained are promises that you have to make, you have to keep. And those are the obligations which you have to perform. So being patriotic, Meaning that you give in your best to your country. You take matter concerning your country first. You talk about the country first before you talk about your personal gains. You rely solely on your country. You do everything to the service of your country not to the service of your ethnic group, not to the service of your church only, but to the service of the nation. Your behavior should be such that complies with the laws and rules of the country. Then to live peaceably and in unity for the progress of the nation. If you look at the coat of arms, if you look at the coat of arms, you notice that we have a banner that is below the shield. On that banner is written the word unity, faith, peace, and progress. Meaning that you have to, you have an obligation to live in peace with other people. You have an obligation to enforce the unity of the country. You have, an, you have an obligation to work for the progress of the country in terms of political progress, in terms of economic progress, in terms of social progress of the country. You have that, you are duty bound. You have that obligation to do all those things as you pledge to do them. Then to perform social duties voluntarily. To perform social duties voluntarily. You can control traffic without looking for money. If you notice that a certain road is congested at a certain junction, as an adult, you can assist to clear the traffic by directing the traffic in an orderly manner. 
on the road. That is one of the ways you can perform your social duties. You can also belong to civic organizations. You can enlist in the Boy Scouts, Girls Guide, the Man O War, in order to be able to perform your civic or social responsibility, sorry, in order to perform your social obligations. You can belong to all those voluntary organizations. You can volunteer to do anything. You can volunteer to teach in a certain area that lacks teacher. You can volunteer. And that tended to be the social obligations you need to perform. Then there are some disadvantages that is likely to be experienced as a result of the failure to perform obligations by citizens. There are disadvantages, there are problems, there are consequences that could be observed as a result of non-performance of obligations on time. The number one is reduction in economic growth and development of the nation. You may not understand what economic growth and development may be, but let me put it to, let me put you through. Let me tell you about what economic growth is. Economic growth is actually when the national income, when the total income earned by a country increases, when the total income in monetary terms, in monetary values, increased over time. That is what is known as economic growth. Economic development is when that increase in national income touches the citizens, when it is able to change the standard of living of individuals in the society that results in economic development. That is when we say there is economic development in the country. But there could be economic growth without economic development. But there is no way there will be economic development without economic growth. I say there could be economic growth without economic development because there could be, we, we may calculate our national income, the money earned as a result of engaging in various economic activities by citizens of the country. We try to divide them by the population of the people and we see that the economy, the value that we have is very high. When that value is merely, or when that growth is merely caused by a one sector economy, it's caused by only one aspect. For example, it may be caused by increase in the production of crude oil. But does the money gained from the crude oil shed to members of the public, does it affect individuals in the society? That is when we could say that there is development. When we sell more oil and have more money, the country could experience economic growth because there is the monetary value of the economy as a result of engaging in that economic activity, drilling on and selling of oil, is great. It has increased. But when you go into the society as a whole, you still notice that there are a lot of people that are very poor and wretched in the society. They don't have money. That means there is no economic development. So I'm trying to explain that so that you get to understand the points raised by number one as the consequences of the failure to perform obligations of the nation. So I'm trying to play that, those terms, explain those terms for your understanding. Then number two, inability of governments to render social services. Like I have said, social services 
are those things the government provided to members of the public without them paying directly for it. The use of which members of the public do not pay directly for the services received. For example, the police services, security services in the country, you don't pay directly to be protected by the police. The military services are all social services. You don't pay for them. You get security of life and property without paying the police, without paying the army, without paying the customs, without paying the immigration directly from your own pocket. But government pays for the provision of those services. And that is why it's called social services. So, the road you walk on, the tight road, well tight road, you've been enjoying to drive along, are all provision of social services. So you don't pay for the use of those items. That is why it is called social services, because it is strictly for the welfare of members of the public. That is why it is called social services. So in our ability of government to render social services, if there is failure in the performance of obligations, for example, you don't pay your tax regularly, you don't pay your tax regularly. You notice that government may not have the money, the revenue. They may not have the revenue. It, the income that accrues to the government, the income that government makes is called revenue. So you may get to see that government may not have the money to implement or provide some of those social services. Then we have citizens who will be exposed to high rates of insecurity. If there is no money to get more arms for the police, no money to get arms for the soldiers to defend the territorial integrity of the country, you will notice that there will be incessant oppression of armed robbers. There will be high rate of insecurity and crime in the society. Then it will lead to anarchy. Anarchy means a condition of lawlessness in the society a condition where there is no law in the society and people behave the way that they like. People can kill without being questioned. So anarchy is a condition of lawlessness in the society. So that will prevail if the citizens fail to perform their obligations. Then it will cause political instability. Like what we Observe if the judiciary is not doing its work well, if the executives are not doing their work well, if the legislatures are not doing their work well, there will be, uh, there will be political instability. People will carry ballot box and be running at any time. So, but if they can perform their functions adequately, the political situation in the country will be stable because due process of choosing leaders will be followed. Everybody will go to the pool and select good leaders. So that is why if there is any failure in the performance of as, uh, that uh, obligations, there will be uh, political instability. It will encourage ethnic and religious crisis. If leaders, considered authorities, do not perform their work very well, by making sure that they provide for the security of life and property, something will happen. There will be ethnic and religious crisis. It will increase the rate of political apathy. Political apathy is the condition where citizens don't have interest for political affairs of the country. So if the, 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 the citizens don't perform their obligations well, or the leaders consider sources do not perform their obligations well, it will lead to lack of interest for politics in the country. 
lack of interest from people activities in the country. Then it will bring about reduction in the standard of living of the citizens. It will bring about reduction in the standard of living of the citizens. Like I have said, if the authorities or citizens try to perform their obligations, uh, there will be a problem. There will be reduction in the standard of living. People won't be able to buy food anymore to eat. People won't, won't be able to make a living. And finally, the bond of unity among citizens can be broken. That simple pledge to be united as one will not be there anymore. Then we need to understand institutions that promote national unity. Institutions that promote national unity, like the National Youth Service Corps, like the National Orientation Agency, like the Unity Schools, like sports and cultural festivals, like Federal Character Commission. Now, National Youth Service Corps, this was established in 1973 with the sole aim of making Nigerian youth to understand the cultures and traditions of other tribes. That was the purpose of establishing NYSC. It was to promote understanding, tolerance, social cultural integration, and unity among Nigerians. Another institution was the National Orientation Agency. There was an agency established by the federal government during during Ibrahim Babajida's administration military. He was the military head of state as at then, or the military president as at then. And uh, that was called MANSA. It was interpreted as mass mobilization for safe reliance, social justice, and economic recovery, MANSA. But that translated to the current National Orientation Agency. Orientation Agency is to enlighten members of the public on government programs and policies that could bring about economic recovery and self-reliance by the citizens. So that is another institution. Then Unity Schools. Unity Schools scheme was aimed at making students of secondary school age to be familiar with the, with the national terrain, with the culture of other places. It was called Federal Government Colleges. Unity Schools was established as Federal Government Colleges to make sure that people from different ethnic groups come together and live to understand themselves better. Then, organization of cultural and, and uh, sporting festivals. It has been ongoing, like the Nuga Games of the University, like the national sports festivals among other states in Nigeria, where different uh, sport, sporting clubs play with other clubs across the country and um, up to the final stage. So that's an example. Then the Federal Character Commission. The Federal Character Commission was established to implement the contents and context of Federal Character Principles. The principles that uh, was introduced into the Constitution to be able to take care of every ethnic group in Nigeria by appointment of government uh, officials. It was to make sure that in the appointment of government officials, important officials of the government, every ethnic group are well represented. So that was the essence of the Federal Character Commission. And I've been telling most of my students that whenever you have a name with commission, agency, then authority, corporation, those are government agencies. Those are government businesses. So you can always identify them by their names. Then factors to promote national consciousness. We have tolerance, like I explained the other time, that 
So tolerance is to bear one another's differences. Then hospitality is the ability to help and assist others in times of need. Then non-discrimination, the ability not to uh, discriminate against people in terms of where they come from, their sex, their religion, and others. Then in that the, the, the way to enforce this national consciousness is actually through intermarriages. People from different ethnic groups should go and marry from another ethnic group to enforce this unity. Then it's written positive values. Then if citizens are able to possess and invite values of punctuality, orderliness, cleanliness, hard work, patriotism, love, honesty, obedience, that means they could be able to promote national consciousness. Well, uh, we have actually come to the end of this class. But before we call it a day, you should look up to the assignments and try to do your assignments. The number one assignment is define obligation of citizens and give two examples. Then mention any three problems associated with failure to perform obligations by citizens. Then finally, finally, when it was NYSC scheme established and for what purpose? All of these, all the questions that we have on the board are sample questions. They are sample questions from external examinations and internal examinations. So I wish to thank you for giving me your time by listening and partaking in the lesson of today. Please always make time to do your assignment and post on the net as appropriate. I thank all of you that have done your assignment earlier on and I say may God bless you. Continue to take part in this lesson so that you will not, you will not be lack, lacking in knowledge. You will have full knowledge and understanding of the subject matter. If you have any question, you can direct to the website or you can even ask me any question now. If you have any question to ask, if there is no question to ask, I wish you success in your endeavors. Thank you very much indeed.